Hey everybody, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Hunters in Shadowlands. Marksmanship Hunters, as of late, have had a rough time in the meta, struggling to find any clear direction and often being overshined by Beast Mastery for PvE and Survival for PvP. Well, now in Shadowlands, Marksmanship Hunter is once again the big bad wolf, or, well, lone wolf that everybody in the arena needs to respect, recently clocking in at S tier in our range tier list. So we've hit up 10 times rank 1 tournament competitor SSDS to share his thoughts on what's bringing back the return of Marksmanship Hunter along with all the information that you need to get your hunter ready for the start of the new Sinful Arena Season 1. This will include all the information you need for races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll be releasing a refresher guide once Season 1 begins that will cover any outdated information in this guide along with taking a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and discussing compositions. So don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified the moment those guides are released. And for more information on SSDS, you can catch him streaming over at Twitch at twitch.tv SSDS or follow him on Twitter at twitter.com SSDSLW, links in the description below. So to kick things off, let's take a look at how Marksman is shaping up for Shadowlands. Well, Marksmanship Hunter is insanely strong due to two main factors. First is its burst damage, having the ability to hit insanely hard with aim shot and rapid fire. This combined with its incredible instant CC, scatter shot, and freezing trap. Where Marksmanship usually faltered was its lack of survivability paired up with low damage, often being simply trained down. Well, now Marksmanship not only packs that extra punch, but also has a ton more survivability with the addition of Binding Shot now being baseline. Not to mention, if people want to tunnel you down, they're going to have a hard time remaining in your line of sight for too long before you simply kill them. So, we know that Binding Shot has been made baseline, but what else has changed to make Marksmanship so good? Well, overall, the rotation remains exactly the same, except for Rapid Fire's duration being reduced from 3 seconds to 2, making the damage a lot more fluent and the spell less clunky overall. Not to mention the addition of the much-beloved kill shot, which makes Marksman an insane addition to setup compositions as once the target drops low, you have really good finishing power. Hunter's Mark returns baseline, giving you some nice added damage as well as newly reworked Folly, which now has a 1 minute CD and actually does some decent AoE damage as well as giving you trick shot. Meanwhile, the talent tree has also undergone an overhaul with buffs to Streamline, Master Marksman, and even Steady Focus. And every Marksmanship Hunter's favorite ability, Chimera Shot, has also made a return, but not in a way that you would expect. It now replaces Arcane Shot when talented and works similar to Beast Mastery's Chimera Shot from Legion and BFA, but costs Focus instead of generating. The best addition of all, though, is a brand new talent called Deadeye, which enables Kill Shot to have two charges and even reduces the CD of Aim Shot when used. So how do these changes affect the overall playstyle of Marksman? Well, Marksman now not only has some of the strongest burst in the game with specific talents and legendaries while having cooldowns up, but also has strong consistent burst windows with aim shot, making every setup incredibly scary for your opponents. And if you thought rogue mage openers were scary, wait until you try Marksmanship. Hitting aim shot from camouflage, utilizing lone wolf and double tap, enables you to 100-0 almost anybody who isn't expecting it. In general though, MM still adapts its normal playstyle of landing instant CC, then looking to set up a kill with burst damage onto a single target combined with your team. We asked SSDS his opinion on the state of MM right now and whether it should be buffed or should it be nerfed. Well, his response was that marksmanship is clearly incredibly strong on the damage front, since you can regularly have 13k aim shot crits. While this damage may be a little on the too strong side of things, it could be nerfed at the cost of giving marksmen a little more quality of life changes, such as a cast reduction on aim shot or the ability to cast while moving, as overall having to be stationary on hunter isn't ideal. Alright, with that overview out of the way, let's now talk about how to set up your marksmanship hunter ready for the season's start. First up, we're going to need a race, and if you're playing Alliance, it may come as a shock, but the best race is for sure still going to be Human. Human allows you to break out of stuns every 3 minutes with their racial will to survive. This allows for the great pairing with the Trinket, Sinful Gladiator's Relentless Brooch, or even playing with 2 DPS Trinkets for the ultimate bang. If you're not keen on Humans, then some considerably weaker alternatives are either Night Elf for the ability to Shadow Meld important casts, or Dwarf for the added defensive utility in stone form. But as mentioned, these are both much weaker alternatives to Human, especially now in Shadowlands with Trinkets no longer being a PvP talent. Now for Horde, again, 
end, you'll be surprised to find out that the clear winner is of course still going to be Orc. Not only does Orc give you the added damage of both Blood Fury and Command for your pet, but more importantly, Orc still provides hardiness, which is one of the strongest racials in the game, giving a passive 20% reduction on the duration of stun effects. Even though this doesn't work with the Relentless Brute, you can of course combine it with the standard trinket to gain the best of both worlds. As for alternatives, nothing really compares to Orc on the Horde side, so if you're not trying to be competitive, then you can just choose solely based on aesthetics. Alright, with your race now selected, let's take a look at talents. Starting off with the level 15 row, the only real choice is going to be the newly buffed Master Marksman. Both Serpent Sting and Murder of Crows are both underwhelming and come with a focus cost. Not to mention, with spells like Aim Shot hitting incredibly hard, the dot provided by Master Marksman can really add up. Dropping down to the level 25 row, we've got a few options. Careful Aim provides a boost to Aim Shot if used on high health targets, making it easy to play with and great for setup compositions, where you're looking to 100 to 0 every time you secure CC. Alternatively, Explosive Shot, while offering more damage, can break CC and requires focus. But if you're looking for a higher overall damage output in your composition, then this is a decent choice. On the level 30 row, there isn't much change from BFA. If you're playing something like Thug Cleave, which is when paired up with a Rogue or just doing any double DPS 2v2 for instance, then Camouflage is the clear winner for that added pressure in the opener. For extended games though, Natural Mending is always going to provide a much bigger benefit and will be the obvious pick giving you a shorter CD on your exhilaration based on the focus you spent. On the newly adapted level 35 row, the go-to talent here is Chimera Shot. Even though this spreads damage now, Chimera simply does more damage than Arcane Shot and is often your second or even highest damage source in a prolonged game. If Rapid Fire ends up being buffed or Chimera being nerfed, then Streamline may end up being the go-to pick, primarily for the reduced cast time on Aim Shot. But for now, Chimera is the clear winner. Next up, there's not much choice on the level 40 row as Post Haste is the obvious choice, providing a root and snare break on top of a sprint, which is too good to pass up for any scenario, especially as marksmanship. Once again, on the level 45 row, there isn't much choice. Despite Deadeye being a new and strong addition, Double Tap is the clear winner, a strong CD that, when paired with Aim Shot, allows you to do an immense amount of damage in a single global, making your setups even more potent. If you're playing with the Venthyr Covenant, which we'll cover later, then Deadeye can be a decent choice due to its class ability providing kill shot procs. Alright, on to the final row where Lock and Load is going to be the best overall, giving you the chance to proc an instant cast aim shot, which also costs no focus. It's also worth noting that Lock and Load can be combined with Double Tap while still gaining the benefits of Double Tap on Rapid Fire. All you have to do is get a Lock and Load proc then use Double Tap and channel Rapid Fire. Then, as the Rapid Fire channel is about to end, use your Instant Aim Shot cast, which will hit twice thanks to Double Tap, giving you twice the value from this talent. Alternatively, right now it's also worth picking up Volley. The reasoning for this is not the damage, but the Trick Shot buff it grants. This can be combined with the Legendary Effect for some ridiculous damage, but we do expect this to be nerfed before release, although this is Blizzard we're talking about, so keep that in mind. Alright, now on to PvP specific talents, and your three defaults are going to be, first of all, Roar of Sacrifice. This is one of the most powerful defensive tools at your disposal, giving you the ability to make anybody on your team immune to critical strikes. Scattershot is your second default talent. Specific to Marksman, this can be used multiple ways and add some nice added CC to your kit. You can use Scatter to peel for your team, stop casts, or simply make sure that your trap lands on the enemy healer. Then, for your third PvP talent, it is recommended to take Survival Tactics. This gives you a 99% damage reduction for a short period after your feigned death as well as removing all magical effects. This is just way too strong to pass up for PvP and has so many uses. However, I do also want to note that on specific maps and against specific classes like Restoration Shamans for instance, the knockback of High Explosive Trap can be a great option to tech in. The same goes for Spider Sting. This PvP talent can be great for shutting down casters, especially when facing comps where you won't gain much value out of Roar of Sacrifice. Anyway, this will leave your normal and PvP default talents looking like so. Alright, now we get on to the new stuff added in Shadowlands, and that would be Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendaries. 
starting off with the covenant choice. But first of all, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Now, this is going to be the most important choice that you make early on in the expansion, as which covenant not only defines which class and covenant abilities you have access to, but also your soulbind choice. There are four covenants, and once you hit level 60, you'll have to choose between them. The four covenants are Kyrian, Necrolord, Benthyr, and the Night Fae, each of which offers a class ability, a covenant ability, and the choice between three different soulbinds, which we'll get into later in the video. So, which covenant is best for marksmanship? Well, for Arena, currently there are three contenders. First is the Kyrian, which gives you the class ability Resonating Arrow. This increases your crit by 30% and, more importantly, lets you ignore line of sight while enemies remain inside and for four seconds after. Benthyr provides Flayed Shot. This is a single target arrow that puts a bleed on your target, which has a chance, when dealing damage, to allow you to use Kill Shot for free and on any target regardless of their health. Flayed Shot brings a certain RNG aspect, with a lot of its power tied into the flayer's mark procs, and if unlucky, the damage from the dot itself is very weak. And then Necrolord, which provides the class ability Death Chakram. This does some strong damage bouncing to other targets if they're near while generating focus. When picking a Covenant, you also have to take into account the Soulbinds and Covenant ability. With this in mind, we currently recommend picking up the Necrolords, while Venthyr and Kyrian both have their place. The strong single target damage from Death Chakram, short cooldown, and added focus generation provides much more fluidity to Marksman's overall rotation. And this is overall the most consistent and well-rounded Covenant choice. Siding with the Necrolords also grants you their covenant ability, which is Fleshcraft. This ability provides you with a shield that prevents damage equal to 20% of your max health. But remember, this is one of the most important decisions that you make when reaching max level, so be sure to check back for any updates that we make regarding this decision. With your covenants now picked, it's time to choose a soulbind. Soulbinds are essentially skill trees that you progress through as you journey through Shadowlands, providing mostly passive bonuses. The three soulbinds available for Necrolord are Plague Divisor Merilith, Emony, and lastly, Bonesmith Hammer. Out of the three, we recommend siding with Plague Divisor Merilith, as for PvP, this provides the most optimal passives, mainly the added defensive of Ooze's Frictionless Coating and the ability to immune CC when using Fleshcraft thanks to the ultimate form soulbind ability. So this is what our recommended route would look like, which might leave you wondering why is half of it empty? Well, that's because we need to fill in these spaces with what's known as conduits. Well, what are conduits? Conduits are placed into three categories, endurance, finesse, and potency. For potency conduits, there are five choices, four class specific, and one covenant. We've got brutal projectiles, deadly chain, powerful precision, and sharpshooters focus. On top of that, we have the covenant specific conduit, which is necrotic barrage. Then for endurance conduits, again, we have four options, harmony of the tortolan, marksman's advantage, rejuvenating wind, and resilience of the hunter. Lastly, finesse conduits provide additional utility with three options, Cheetah's Vigor, Reversal of Fortune, and Tactical Retreat. How many of each conduit type you can use is based off of the route that you take on your Soulbind tree. Taking a look back at our selected route, we have three potency conduits and one finesse. Out of the five potency conduits available to us, the best three are going to be Necrotic Barrage for the added damage and focus generation, Powerful Precision for the buff to precise shots, and Brutal Projectiles, giving you the chance to proc an improved rapid fire. Then for our last slot, we have a finesse conduit, in which our best option is going to be Tactical Retreat. This enables you to snare targets when you disengage. Combined with the talent post haste, this allows you to create a larger distance when facing melee targets. So this will leave your soulbind looking like this when completed. All right, that now brings us to our final section. Which legendary should you craft for PvP? Currently, as it stands, all legendaries are active in Arena, and you may only equip one at a time, but this could change potentially later down the line. For Marksmanship Hunter, there is one clear winner right now, which is Serpent Stalker's Trickery. How this works is that if you hit a target with Aim Shot while the Trick Shot buff is active, you also fire an Arcane Shot, which naturally translates into a Chimera Shot if you spec into it. Combining this with Double Tap, you can put out an unreal amount of damage to your target and all those around them all buffed by 
precise shot. And you can take this one step further by specking into the talent volley for a guaranteed trick shot every one minute. Although this legendary is very clearly way over tuned and possibly bugged right now. So when or if this inevitably gets fixed, the fallback legendary is going to be the Craven Stratagem. What this does is reduces Fane Death's CD to 15 seconds and causes it to remove most negative effects on you. Now, you'll be surprised by how many abilities are affected by this. Things like bleeds, curses, and other strong debuffs all get removed, making the utility and defensive survivability from this legendary unrivaled. All right, everyone, that's going to conclude our first look at Marksmanship Hunters in the up and coming expansion, Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need in order to get started the second the expansion hits. Be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow up video, which will include any updates on the information you saw in this guide, plus a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even what your best compositions are. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.